Greetings, my friends! This is Yanis Kamatsiaris with the Apocalyptic Nights, and uh, there has been a very, very interesting discussion about uh, knives and knife fighting and how they were used, how they are held, and all that recently. Uh, so I thought I would like to uh, also contribute to this conversation. Uh, now, I've done a lot of knife fighting, like my main passion is sword and axe, uh, and also other weapons, of course, but uh, mostly sword and axe. Uh, but uh, I have spent most time, the most time with, uh, with uh, knives, because of my ninjutsu past, and then also because, you know, uh, if you want to train some uh, kind of self-defense uh, techniques for today, you've got to go with knife. I mean, nobody's going to carry a sword, and you don't need really a sword in today's circumstances. That's why armies don't go uh, you know, to war with a rifle and a big two-handed sword in the back or whatever. They just carry combat knife. It's enough for almost all purposes. So, there has been the argument of uh, whether or not uh, the grip has to be this kind of grip, like the sword grip, or this kind of grip, so-called ice pick grip, well, in my ninjutsu years, because also it's in the mentality of ninjutsu to do everything, to cover everything, to exper experiment and uh, explore everything. Uh, we did experiment a lot with all kinds of grips and uh, we did do it from a researcher's perspective. We weren't biased towards any grip for any reason. We didn't have a reason to be. And uh, what we figured out uh, personally and also what the, the teacher was uh, uh, telling us is that basically this is a fighting grip for a knife. This grip has only a limited purposes and it's not like it's not a grip that you want to have if you fight somebody like that he's in front of you and you are you have a direct confrontation with somebody. That's for knife fighting of course. We'll talk about rondels with triangular uh, spikes, not really blades uh, later on in this conversation. Now, basically, there are three kinds of fighting that I've ever seen anybody do with a knife that, you know, could have some effectiveness. One is so-called ice pick grip. Um, not much versatility there, but we'll go into that later. And uh, the second is this stance, kind of like sword fighting, knife in front, covering all the area, cutting whatever comes, and uh, also being able to attack from any kind of angle. And then, the other is this one. Now, let's go into some detail about how you knife fight with somebody else that has a weapon or doesn't have a weapon. It doesn't make a difference. You, you try to keep uh, a good idea, it's not necessary, but a good idea is to try to keep your hand up here, around your neck, because this way not only do you protect your neck, which is the most lethal spot that you can get attacked at, but also uh, you, can, uh, you have it ready to grab or to, you know, to grab a hand and then cut, grab a hand cut. You can do a lot of uh, nice things when you have the hand here because you control this area and you can kind of, you know, grab a coming attack and cut or whatever. It's really versatile uh, and very functional and protective at the same time because if this gets injured, it's much better that my hand gets injured than my neck. If my neck gets injured, I die. If my left hand gets injured, I'm pretty, well, pretty much okay because my right hand still has a knife and is still fighting. And also I have the time, while he stabs my hand, to stab something more useful. <clears throat> so, I'm like this, and basically knife fighting is pretty straightforward, no matter how uh, complicated uh, it appears to be sometimes to people. It's pretty straightforward. There are stabs that come from any direction, like straight, from this corner, from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, and from down here. So, it's basically going around any defense and stabbing at something that you target. It may be, it may be his hand, it may be something else, his body, his neck, whatever. <coughs> and you still, <coughs> excuse me, a bit under the weather. That's why I delay with my videos a bit, between two jobs and the family and the band and other training and stuff. I sometimes find uh, some time to make a video and it's usually when I'm under the weather when I'm a little, uh, a little ill. Uh, that's when I have the time, unfortunately. So, anyway, uh, we are here, and uh, like we said, the staff. So you try to basically go around the defenses and attack the other person or attack. You can also stab at something that's coming. The target is there. You, you also try to go around something else, like a defense or go to just use the best uh, 
best angle, the fastest angle to that target without fighting an obstacle. So maybe he's attacking, his hand is here, and you, you try to stab the hand, so that's the stab then. The target is there, it's not there anymore. And then there is the cats, which follow the same pattern pretty much. It's like this cat, it's 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 this cat, this cat, this cat. Of course, I'm making them a bit, a bit uh, larger than normal, because I want to show you, like in a, in a real fight, it's much shorter, it's shorter cats, it's much shorter. It's like this or like this, whatever, I mean, it depends how you are at that position, those vertical, uh, th this vertical one is the same, but from the bottom, because the elbow gets in the way of the body, uh, either it's this or it's this. This has the elbow up, and this has the elbow, yeah, and this and this, like, it's usually very small moves in a real fight. You don't need to make like big moves, but it's good to make the big moves in the beginning to get used to the, you know, to just feel all this force that can come and just get used to it with your body. So, now that we said this, it becomes pretty clear that it's really adv advantageous to have the knife in your front hand, not be like this. Because being like this means that one, you have this exposed and of course, it's a good idea to have the hand exposed if you're fighting a dog, for example, because then you can let him bite your hand and then you can kill him with a knife uh, because it's an animal. But when you're fighting a, a human with a knife and a brain, what he's going to do in this case is he will attack your exposed limb and he will retract. He will go back. You won't have the time to counterattack if he does it right. Uh, and you will just injure your hand for no reason. Uh, some people do it because they hope that they will catch something. They basically always try to catch something and then attack. And that can work against a slow opponent, but against an opponent that is a little good, there is no chance it will work. Also, when you are like this, you limit your uh, moves, like, you cannot really attack easily on that side. You can kind of well attack on this side, but it's generally, um, I mean, if you control this area, well, you should be controlling this area. You know, this is the area that you shouldn't let anything go, uh, go past. That you should cut whatever comes. You know, this is the area. It's, it's, not, it's not in here. It's not right in front of your face. When, you know, just a little point protruding can be, can be deadly. You can block it just like one tenth of a second too late and then that's it. So, to finish with the advantages of this kind of uh, stance, uh, let, let us say that uh, it's also very very good, apart from the versatility of the attacks that can come from anywhere and you know there is a threat all the time and you can get full length with all strikes, which you cannot really with this kind of thing. I cannot reach out there. If I reach out there I have to be like this and you know don't hold my knife very tight so I can go up to here or up to there. And I mean it's the, the contortions of the body are, are, are really weird if you attack like that. So I mean it goes against the mechanics of the of the arm. It's like uh, you're stretching it or something for no purpose. Well, this you just extend your arm and you attack from any angle. It's it doesn't really matter. You know, it's it's a lot more easy and uh, natural to attack like this. Now, the other thing that is very good with this kind of grip is that you can attack incoming attacks very, very easily and very effectively, most effectively than any other grip, of course. Uh, because uh, if it comes from this arc, I can cut it. I can cut the hand right, well, right when the knife has passed me. Like, let me show you this. If the knife has passed me, it's here. I still have enough space before he, before he connects with me that I can cut the hand. The hand is here at the, at the knife blade. Let me show you better. The hand is here at the knife blade, and even if it gets past that, and it's here, I mean, I still have time from here that I can, I can first cut him, till here I can still cut him, and he still hasn't connected. So, I have all this space to cut at the incoming attacks. Now, if he attacks from that side, let's say an attack is coming like this, I can cut like this, this kind of cut is coming up there. It can cover, uh, you know, attacks that come from the top, like this, if you modify it a bit, 
and uh, it can cut uh, hands that are coming from that corner and also that come from that side completely, like from, the, from my left side, I can just cut at them. It can also cut at, uh, of course, modified. It can cut uh, attacks that are coming from the bottom corner, like this. So, with this I can cover all this area. I can just attack the hand. The hand is the number one target uh, that you have in any knife fight. Uh, the, the significance of targets are like this. They are uh, one is the hand, two is the leg, because these are the easiest targets to get to, really. The, they are the ones that stand out the most and you can attack them more easily. And the hand is number one. And if you, if you lose his hand, if he injures his hand, his knife hand, he's pretty much finished. So, really important and, and the easiest target to get is the hand. So, two is uh, the knee or the leg whatever you want to attack, that kind of area down there. And uh, the third is the neck, the fourth is the body. The third is the neck. The neck is pretty protected, it's, it's far back and it's got a knife covering it at the same uh, height, you know, it's, it's not so easy to get to. You need to cover a lot of distance and also uh, go past a lot of protections, defenses to get it. So, from the other side, it's not very practical to make a normal cutting uh, block because, you know, like this you can make totally a cutting block. Like it totally cuts and cuts really deep this way if it, the knife is also this sharp like this one. Uh, by the way, if you want to see how to sharpen it like this, just check my sharpening video that I made earlier. On that side, to make it uh, align, to have edge alignment, it's really difficult. You need to have it like this and do something like this. It's not natural. It's not, not really easy. But, if the knife is sharp enough, you don't need to because you can just kind of block and then fillet the arm. Like, you understand? You, it's, let's say this knife is the arm. You block it, you block it, and then you fillet it. You slide the knife down the arm. And you basically, in, the, in an arm, you would block it and then slice, uh, cut all the way down and totally remove all the meat. It's like uh, deboning something. It's really gruesome and really deadly. Uh, so you don't need to make a full uh, like with edge alignment from this side. It's enough if you just uh, if it's enough if you just do this. This this is enough to actually do this job. This move like you don't need to turn the blade like this and cut this this way which is not really working well. But you can do this and this way you can get also full motion, like full range. You can block out there if you want. You can keep a lot of distance by just blocking at the enemy, enemy's uh, arm and at the same time block and then slide it down slide it down the bone and take all the meat out really gruesome really gruesome but that's how knife fighting is it's really ugly it's a really ugly type of fight anyway uh, now uh, this way you can defend from all the other angles we said with this kind of thing you can defend from all that side against the, the incoming hand uh, and of course, after a defense, you can attack at the body or the neck if you want to. And then from this side, you can defend by just doing this. You can defend up there, you can do that. You can do that. <coughs> and then you can defend here on the right, of course, on the right side. And then you can defend also from the lower, uh, the lower against the lower strikes. Although, if it's not too extreme angle, if it's not coming totally from there, you can still do this to, so, to the low strikes, that you, you basically make a circle like that, that you cut what is coming, but you do it down there, like this. I don't know if you can see, maybe the camera doesn't show it very well. But, yeah, uh, if it comes from this angle, it's difficult to get it there, because the, the angles are not fitting very well, this angle with the other one, it's a bit slow to get there. So then maybe you need to do this block, just this, but it's still very deadly. Now, the notorious ice pick creep. This creep has a couple of advantages, that is true, but it is in no way, shape or form the best grip for knife fighting or even a viable one for knife fighting. Uh, if you don't believe me, for any reason, for whatever reason, because somebody else told you not to, or because you just don't think it makes sense. Uh, I really urge you, it's YouTube, there are thousands of videos of knife fighting comp competitions. I really, really urge you to go 
look at them and search for one single successful person that is not fighting with bums, that is fighting with some kind of good skill level uh, knife fighters, that is holding it like this. You won't find one. Maybe if you find one that is like demigod, so like god level, and then for that guy there will be like another 200 that are fighting with this grip. And if you try it yourself, and if you experiment, if you train for, with it, you will understand the reason. The reason is really simple. This is not a versatile grip. You cannot do many things with it uh, effectively. Uh, some people said, yeah, it's really good because you can block things up there, and you can block things down here, and you can block things left and right, and you can block everything. Uh, first of all, blocking things in this grip is not good, because what happens is, in order to block, you first expose your hand, and then you block. With the other grip, you first block, and then you expose your hand. So, you can imagine which one is better. To, in order to block with this grip, I need to move a strike that is coming here. Let's show this. Strike that is coming here. I need to move my hand up here, and then block. That's pretty much double the move than if I had the knife like this, and this is coming like this, and I can block it. Or I can block the hand even better. In order to block the hand with this kind of grip, you need to not only push it up, push the knife up, but also move it one time, this length, and second time, this length, and then cut. While my arm is here, I cut down here. That's like three times the, three times the, mo the movement, or the wasted time, that it takes for this kind of thing to cut at the hand with one single move. Because, you know, the blade is already at the, at the right uh, height, and uh, I just need to extend to the, to the hand. Now, what advantages does this have? Uh, sometimes you don't want to kill your opponent, and you just want to disarm them. Disarming them with this grip, with this hand, is indeed difficult. Because you are holding this knife, and... I mean, the only way I could uh, imagine that, and I don't really think it's very viable, is if you just hit with the back of the knife very hard at the enemy hand, and he hits his hand and drops his knife, something like that. Of course, it is possible to do it with this grip a little better, and it's really a little better, it's not easy to do at all. Because he's not going to give you the right angle, and you're not going to be... This is, this is a very time-wasting uh, grip to attack and defend with. Because, you know, you need to basically hook the incoming arm, hook it like that, like I cannot show you really very easily, anyway, hook it like that, and then try to do some kind of twisting move that you will disarm him with, kind of like Zuzitsu. Um, of course, that's pretty much for Chuck Norris and the movies. I cannot do it, I haven't seen anybody who can do it in real speed, and uh, yeah, unless, of course, he has practiced it a lot and then the, his... Uh, partner kind of cooperates, which is the norm in martial arts exhibitions. So, the other advantage that this grip has is definitely not in a direct, direct confrontation with somebody. It's not really, I mean, yeah, you, like somebody said, you can attack from many angles, you can do it, like, you can, but I can tell you, you cannot see it in camera very well, I can tell you that my range is limited and the angle is one that I can only attack sideways, like, I can attack from the side, see it? I can attack from the side. With this kind of thing, I can attack with my blade being straight, and I can stab. With this one, I can stab only if he's right there. If he gets past that, or is, he's before that, I cannot really stab him. I miss him. It works like an axe this way. It really works like an axe, like boom, boom. He has to be there. If he's not there, it's not like a long blade anymore. Uh, it's not like a sword that can, you know, kind of cut him, even if he's not exactly here and he's here or here you know, in all its length. It's really a hit, or, a hit or miss, and it's really, I mean, I don't, really don't see the reason to use it. It doesn't offer any advantage, it just offers disadvantages in this sense. Now, one situation that this finds itself uh, useful in is uh, when you basically are uh, a Green Beret or an army commander or something, and you are trying to backstab somebody. You find an opportunity and you uh, sneak up on uh, somebody and you want to backstab them. Uh, there is, of course, a standard thing that they grab the mouth very hard and they stab at the kidney, or they try to get the lungs if the knife is long enough and, you know, they can thrust deep enough through the ribs and all that. Maybe they try to get the lungs with this kind of stab, by the way, not this kind of stab, because this will find a lot of resistance at the bones of uh, the rib cage. Well, this will slide through more easily. Uh, now, um, this is one uh, situation. 
that you kind of stuff like that. But uh, if you wanna, if you wanna, uh, you know, kill somebody from the head, because the other one takes more time and a little more time, a couple of more seconds maybe, and uh, it's you know it's not guaranteed that you will uh, kill the other guy immediately. Uh, the guaranteed is that uh, one guarantee is that you will cut his throat. In order to do that, you need to grab it like this. And one way to do it is like this. Hold the knife the other way, like this, you know, with the blade facing, the edge facing to your hand. Grab the head, cut the throat from the back at, this, at one motion, like... <laughs> but this is really unreliable because if you want to be, be certain that you can do it, uh, this is really unreliable because all he has to do is kind of feel that you are coming for one, like one moment, one single moment before you cut his throat, all he has to do is, you know, like the boxers, raise his shoulder a bit, or kind of do this to defend, and what will happen is that the blow will either glance off the shoulder and cut his face, will make him a, a terrible scar, but he will survive and maybe kill you the, the next uh, second, or it will uh, cut into his shoulder, really hurt his shoulder, but not do much to his life. And again, he can kill you, or yell uh, an alert, like issue an alert, or anything else. So what some people do is they use this kind of grip and they try to stab here where there is a huge artery. You need to really not be very good at anatomy to find it at such a situation, especially if it's dark and all that. And But if you stab in here, you cut this artery, especially, it has to be a pretty broad bladed knife, it cannot be like a very, very, very thin one, it has to be at least this big in order to have good chances to cut that artery because you don't want to just hit it with the point and then move it aside as you, the knife goes in, you want to hit it with the point and cut it because the wound will be opening, the wound will, will be opening and then it, can, uh, it will cause damage all the way down. So you need to, you need to find this artery and basically uh, plunge this knife into here, into this part of the, before the between the shoulder and the neck. So, this grip is useful for that. It's for grabbing somebody, stabbing him there, and then he will, uh, he will very fast bleed to death, and before he bleeds to death he will pass out because uh, this artery is responsible for sending blood from the heart to the brain. Uh, if that gets cut off for uh, even a couple of seconds, he will pass out before he dies. So that's really good, obviously, if you are into, if you are a soldier of this kind and you are into this type of mission. Now, Thrun made some tests and he showed that this grip is better for penetrating armor or penetrating clothes. Um, I do agree that it's better because, one, it uses gravity. It does use gravity, that's a very important factor, of course. Uh, but uh, it's uh, mostly because of another reason that uh, I never, I've never seen anybody mention that and I'm, it's really curious. Now, let's explore it, given this uh, opportunity. Uh, the different types of people, uh, depending on what they have trained or what they have uh, done as a profession, have developed more strength in different uh, kind of muscles of their body, more strength and more you know, ease of uh, the muscle contracting and expanding than others. For example, uh, somebody who has done boxing has really thrown a lot of hooks and uh, has made these kind of muscles more active than uh, those outside muscles of the, of the arm. So if you tell him to cut, and I fall into that category because I've trained a lot with the punching bag, and uh, I will tell you why I think it's interesting. Um, you know, it's much easier for me to, to, uh, to issue a hard strike, a really hard strike this way, than it is this way. This way it's more difficult. And you can see it's slightly more slow, maybe you can see it in the video. Like, it's more slow, but this way I can do it more easily. It's because of all those hooks, you know, that's, that's a simple reason. Uh, on a video I saw Scalagrim make a kind of a test with a sword, was it, or with an axe, I don't remember, some kind of test cutting at a wood, and I remember him saying, and I was so surprised that he said it, that uh, it's stronger this way. He was making this try, he has his, his hand behind his uh, back, like he often does, and he was striking like this, like this, I can remember it's this strike, I think I'm not mistaken. And then he said, that's more powerful. And I'm like, really? That's really weird and interesting at the same time. Because for him it was. And I noticed that people who trained, uh, who mostly trained 
swordsmanship or fighting with uh, weapons tend to have this approach. Sorry, tend to have this approach because for them the most powerful uh, muscle system that they have practiced uh, is this one of the back of the shoulder. Because in unarmed martial arts, there is very few things you need to practice in with that kind of strength. You know, maybe it's like a back fist or maybe it's like an elbow, but you, you almost never do that. Uh, this kind of elbow especially. This kind of elbow, yes, but this uses also the same chest muscles and shoulder, front shoulder muscles. And also, the, of course, it's the movement of front, that can, the power that comes from the, from the torso, from the, down the waist. From the hips also and all that. So, uh, for him it was easier to do this strike, while for me it's clearly much easier and stronger and faster and I can do it more times without getting tired to do this kind of strike. Like, uh, attack to the inside. Attack to the inside of my stance. If it's on the left, then it's this one. Like, yeah? But this one is a bit slower. I mean, it's a knife, so it's pretty fast anyway, but it's a bit slower. And uh, not as powerful. So, uh, somebody who has been splitting a lot of uh, firewood, for instance, will of course have been used to raising uh, an axe and dropping it down <laughs> and splitting the wood. So, guess which muscles will have been stronger for that guy? Now, it's the Middle Ages. Everybody, everybody, almost everybody, let's say, is splitting firewood because there is no uh, natural gas, no LPG, no petroleum, uh, no other alternative ways of heating. You basically need to burn wood in order to get heat. If you don't get heat, you freeze in the winter and then you die and that's your story. So, everybody, almost everybody has been used to splitting wood. So, that's to me a powerful, really strong explanation why people sometimes prefer this kind of grip because this kind of movement is mechanically more familiar to them and they have trained their body in order to make it more powerful than let's say this kind of movement this kind of movement this kind of movement uh, or uh, any other kind of movement than this this boom 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 downwards so th that's in my opinion the reason why it was in the manuals in, it's in the manuals of the middle ages not because it's the best but because it was the best for somebody who is not very well trained and wants to be fairly effective using the body mechanics that he has already trained and, is, and, are, and are familiar and useful to him, that they are a part of him. And also keep in mind that uh, knife fighting wasn't really something that, I mean, nobody in the Middle Ages would put a lot of time and effort specifically for knife fighting techniques, to train knife fighting techniques. Why? Because very simply, it's the Middle Ages, it's a matter of life and death to be effective with a weapon, and the knife isn't the weapon you want to carry when there is a million types of, short, of longer weapons that inflict more damage. You're not going to go to war with a knife unless you are a peasant that is sent to war and that's all you have, or a complete imbecile, the, the madman of the village or something, you go to war with this. You wouldn't go to war against swords with this, or against axes or halberds or spears. And then all the knife would be useful uh, for would be uh, if, for example, your main weapon is lost or breaks or anything happens to it, then you just take the knife out and start stabbing, 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 stabbing. Also, this is a, a, a move that uh, is useful, I forgot to mention it earlier. It's useful when, you know, uh, somebody was uh, throwing somebody down, was taking somebody down, like with knights, that's how they were often taking prisoners. They would throw somebody down, take out the rondel or the dagger and put it right over the slit of the of the eyes in the helmet and ask him to surrender and this is when he would surrender or die so he usually would surrender because that makes more sense than dying without any purpose so that's another thing to mention that when you are on the ground this grip is better I, I admit that in this case this grip is better why? because you are already on the ground with, the, with your opponent and uh, the the, draw, the main drawback of this grip, which is the range, the range, and also the versatility, you don't need versatility when you're on the ground. If you can attack here, here, and here, that's, that's more than enough, if you're on the ground. Because he only has two hands, and one of them will be 
uh, occupied by your hand anyway. So you just have to overcome one hand and stab somewhere that is not protected while holding his other. That's, it's that simple, really. So this grip is better because you can get more, more powerful power because it uses the, the muscles also of the back because it's like you're pulling something. So bam! You can use your weight, you can use gravity, you can use everything to make a powerful strike. Maybe even go through his block. If he's trying to block upwards, he's going against gravity, you're going with gravity. You're using a, the strongest, one of the strongest muscles of the body here, here on the back. Boom! You can go through that block. So in the ground, this is more useful and that is true. While standing up, there is slight, if any, chance that this could ever beat this. Now, I also said that I will talk about the difference of rondels and uh, daggers and knives and all that stuff. All that good stuff. Now, let's say it like this. The thinner the blade of a knife is, the better it cuts. Because cutting, let me show you this, cutting is basically a combination of the first contact which creates an opening at the enemy skin or whatever armor, the, the enemy surface it creates an opening, a slight opening, and then something has to pass through that opening and enlarge it because the cut is just a straight line with no, you know, with no surface then something has to pass through it in order to cut deep this something, the more friction it finds and the more it has to open stuff the, the less deep it will go because it will have a lot more friction, a lot more material to open and then it will stop faster while if it's very thin and it has very little to, to open and very uh, little to cause friction to it it can slice really deep because that edge, if it's razor sharp, it will keep cutting and keep cutting and uh, it will be losing very little of its uh, momentum uh, at a given time so you can cut really deep and uh, by the way, that's the reason why, the, for example, some cold steel swords which are really uh, cheap, cheaply made in the sense that it's just sheet metal just a sheet of metal and they make a great sword, for example, but it's really, really thin. Uh, it cuts really well. But the problem with that, to me it's a problem, to some other people maybe it's not, is that it flexes a lot. It flexes a lot because, one, it's very thin, and two, you need to make it from a type of steel that will flex and not break. You cannot make it from a very hard steel. Uh, you, can, you have to make it from a strong steel. That's how they call those ones that flex and can take a lot of punishment without breaking. They're called strong, while the other ones are called hard, but they're, they're uh, brittle. They can break very easily if you give them a, a hard strike with something, or strike them against something hard. So, this type of sword, you have to make it from a strong steel that will uh, flex a lot, because it needs to absorb, it, it's very thin and it needs to absorb any kind of punishment or pressure that it takes, so it doesn't break. Otherwise, this thing, it would break, with a hard steel, it would break the first strike. So, keep that in mind. So, back from the kitchen. This is a kitchen knife. You probably cannot even see the blade, it's so thin. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the best cutting knife in the world. In the world, this type of knife, this thing. And that's why they use it in the kitchen, because it can really slice through anything with very little effort if it's razor sharp, because... Danae, she's opening the door, damn it! Pienes de mama. Mommy, that is your little daddy. The reason why this cuts so well is that it has so little, so little uh, width that once the, the razor sharp blade opens, opens something up, it, uh, the rest of it has no difficulty going through that opening because it's almost the same width. It's just slightly w wider. Almost no, no wider, almost no wider, so it can easily cut through everything very, very well. But the slight problem, you may say, with this kind of knife is that it flexes. It has flex. I mean, it does flex. And this is actually a pretty hard one, I don't want to flex it too much because I would break it, because it needs to be hard and also, uh, you know, it flexes naturally because it's thin, but it's made of a kind of hard steel because uh, it's uh, meant to be really sharp and maintain the edge. So the fact that it flexes uh, is maybe a drawback because you don't have such a solid defense whenever you want but it's also uh, a problem because you cannot use steel that uh, you know can uh, maintain a good edge 
take a good edge and maintain a good edge very well with a normal knife of this type. If it was a knife, a fighting knife, this would this specific one wouldn't be very good because it's made of a kind of hard steel, so it keeps an edge, it's really sharp, uh, it would break the first strike it takes from a, a sword or the second, it would probably break, or whatever, if it hits something, a hard surface, it's not meant to do that. But uh, a normal knife of this type that would have some uh, strength and wouldn't break so easily would have to be from a, a kind of second grade steel, not, not a second grade steel, but a steel that would not keep an edge or take an edge very well. Now, that's the reason why fighting knives or military knives are significantly thicker. This is much thicker. Let me show you for comparison reasons. I don't know if you can see how thicker it is. It's really much thicker. I turn it from the back. There, there's a significant difference, really significant difference. I think you can see it. So, this kind of knife uh, is, has also a razor sharp edge because I sharpened it to be like that. It wasn't like that when I got it. And also I changed the bevel. Uh, it was a much more like, you know, fat bevel, much more, uh, you know, sudden. And I made it more like this, more, more smooth, that, you know, it doesn't get so much friction at once, that it can sl the cut can slide a bit better off with this kind of bevel that I created. Uh, so this kind of thing also has a razor sharp edge like the other. It's basically a straight line of no mass that first makes a contact and will open what it hits in the with the same ease. But this kind of knife will uh, not go through that opening so easily like that knife because it's just more fat and has more friction. So it will have a harder time going through. It will still go through to some point, but not as well as the other one. What is the advantage that it has? The main advantage it has is that it's a much... Uh, the main two advantages, let's say, like that, is that one, it's more sturdy. This is really hard steel, so it's really difficult to break. And at the same time, it's very stiff. Stiff is good for defending. Stiff is good for knowing that it will be there when you want it to and will not bend back and, you know, whatever. And uh, the, the really, if I had to choose one advantage that is the most important one, is that this is a better weapon for thrusting because of the stiffness of the blade. This blade, when you thrust, there is no chance it will bend. This, however, when you thrust, it will bend. It will probably bend the, the moment it finds a hard surface, like a bone or something. Or even not even that. If it finds clothes or a jacket, it will probably bend as well. And when it bends, what happens is that it makes a curve and the kinetic energy that it uh, takes from the hand, the force that the hand creates, is not, dis is not administered at the edge of the blade uh, completely, but it's getting lost to, into creating this arch. So you're basically losing a lot of power from the thrust with this kind of strike, so it doesn't thrust as effectively. It doesn't thrust as effectively unless you, str you thrust at something really soft that causes, uh, creates no resistance and then the resistance is not enough for it to bend. But this will not bend no matter what. So, better thrusting weapon. Now, having that in mind, we have to remember that the rondels of the Middle Ages, that we see so many treatises, uh, you know, that they're using rondels like that, the reason why we see rondels being held like that in treatises in the Middle Ages, uh, apart from the probably main reason that is the, like I explained before, the muscle systems that they had developed and uh, had been accustomed to using and that were more active in the body of everybody, uh, is also that the rondel is a dedicated stabbing weapon. I mean, it has a very, a very, uh, a very thin blade and this blade that is very thin has to be a little thick, otherwise the rondel will be really flexy and not very good at stabbing. And rondels had to be good at stabbing for sure. If maybe they would want, they would uh, dream of them uh, being very good at cutting, but stabbing was the priority, because uh, you need with a rondel to go through armor. You you need to go through that helmet when you want to take a prisoner. You're gonna you want to go through every opening in the armor. It's a stabbing weapon. That's why it's also so long because you want to stab and reach a vital organ. So rondel stabbing weapon. This stabbing and cutting weapon. This, if it was a weapon, it would be a cutting weapon, mostly. Stabbing, 
would be possible. It's pretty sharp and pointy, but it wouldn't be ideal because of the flex that would take away the force and maybe even break the knife. So, if the rondel was a stabbing weapon, that's the reason why the blade is not as uh, uh, wide as this, because it needs to be thinner in order to go through gaps in armor, through ribs, through anything. It can penetrate deeper if it's thinner. If you want to have it thin and also strong, sturdy, that it doesn't flex so that you can thrust well, what you need to do is to make, you need to make it thicker. So, a knife with a thin blade, uh, I mean with not a wide blade, but a thin blade in this dimension, but also a thick blade cannot have a good edge. Because even if you make it razor sharp at the end, it widens up so much that it would have so much resistance that it wouldn't be a good cutting weapon at all. So the rondel was not a cutting weapon, it was a dedicated thrusting weapon. With a dedicated thrusting weapon, this kind of grip sometimes loses a lot of its functionality. Why does this happen? Because this is useful because you can cut things that are coming. You can mostly cut things. You can also stab at them, but stabbing at the hand that is coming is really a gamble. Because this point has to, to, to connect. Just this point. If this point, this little point misses, you miss. And the strike passes, and if a strike passes to an unprotected area, you're dead, pretty much, or incapacitated. So, this grip that is so useful with a knife, with a knife, because of the cutting and protecting all that area, becomes much less useful with a rondo, because even if you cut with a rondo, it's just going to make a small scratch and nothing more. Uh, if it's especially a triangular shaped rondel, maybe it won't even make the scratch. Although it's st the sturdiest uh, version that doesn't easily break when it gets hit by something. And it is, it's also good for penetrating, because it's sturdy. It keeps uh, the knife from flexing at all. It doesn't flex at all. But it's, it's not cutting. It cannot cut. Uh, so, it loses its usefulness. It uh, only would keep the reach. And that's why I guess some people were using the rondel this way keeps the reach. So, if you are like this with a rondel and you can only thrust, you might as well change your grip into this. Forget about cutting at all. Just go for thrusting. And just go for thrusting at the high areas where is the province of the effectiveness and the power of this strike. And let's make it like a brutal battle uh, with not much technique really, but just that force prevails. More force prevails in this strike because it's not so versatile, but it's just force, stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. And you can stab the areas, you can see me and the knife, you can stab at the neck from both sides, the head, the, the neck vertically, you can stab, stab, stab at the most lethal area, area of the human body. But you need to get close to that, to do that. So, let's give the rondel a guard, a disc guard here, and a disc guard at the back, and hope that uh, I can somehow push something aside once as I close in to grapple with the opponent, then grab him, start stabbing at him while he has his weapon down there, and maybe I have grabbed it and I have, uh, you know, incapacity, uh, and I have kind of disarmed him. He cannot do much if I hold him and I start stabbing at him, and he will die very fast if I stab him here. So it's not really a refined weapon, it's a military weapon. Uh, it's, the rondel is a military weapon, it's meant to go through armor, it's meant to kill somebody very fast in a brutal way, but it wouldn't work if the enemy had a knife and was good in fighting with it. The exception that changes all of that that we said until now is gauntlets. Gauntlets in the hand, either steel gauntlets or chainmail gloves, or any kind of thing like that that cannot be cut with a knife. Even thick leather gloves that cannot be easily cut with a knife or even if you cut them, you will just make a scratch to the enemy because all the cut will have been diminished to go through the, the leather. Uh, so that changes the game very much. That changes the game very much because those cuts that you were relying on don't be, uh, become less effective. So, in that context, and not in modern co context that you know you have normal standard leather gloves, not very thick ones, and uh, you never have gauntlets in war today and, you know, chainmail gloves. Uh, then uh, in that context of armor, of hand armor in particular, 
or even you know arm armor because you can only also get the wrist and stuff. If it go if it goes up to here, then you're golden. Then in that context, this becomes maybe a better option because you cannot get through his hand like this. You might as well change your grip, go for the neck directly, forget about the rest, try to kind of block or you know take a little as little damage as possible from the attack that will take you before you reach him close enough to stab like this and just lunge on him and start stabbing away. And given that it's the Middle Ages and people had some kind of armor when they were going to war usually and that uh, uh, you know fighting wasn't really refined very much, it was very brutal and uh, yeah you know it was also, in the, later on in the Renaissance, there was still kind, kind of uh, infantry armor that, you know, the hand-to-hand the -hand infantry would have, like buff coats or gambesons. Considering that, this kind of stuff might be preferred by some that would want to close, take as little damage as possible, grab the enemy, maybe hold his arm, and then start stabbing away with his strength that if he also tried to block by holding your arm, your arm would go downwards, would use gravity, his arm would push upwards, would go against gravity, you would be using a powerful muscle, which is here, the muscle of the back, to, pu to pull it down and stab very hard, and you would probably prevail. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and uh, feel free to subscribe, like and comment, because all those things are always nice and appreciated. Have a good day.